It's difficult to get those images out of your head. That was how the SNP's Westminster leader described the scene outside his former first minister's home earlier this week. Nicola Sturgeon's husband, the former SNP chief exec, Peter Morrill, had been arrested that day, though later released and not charged. Now it's reported another police raid, this time at Peter Morrill's mother's home, 50 miles away. A £100,000 luxury motorhome was reportedly wheeled away from the house in Fife as part of the active investigation into SNP finances around the spending of £600,000, which was earmarked for an independence campaign. Scotland's former first minister spoke yesterday for the first time since her husband's arrest. I mean, first up, there is obviously nothing I can say about the ongoing investigation. Uh, much as there are things I might want to say, I'm not able to do so, uh, other than to say that, as has been the case, there will continue to be full cooperation. Uh, the last few days have been obviously difficult, quite traumatic at times, but I understand that is part of a process. She acknowledged she would cooperate fully with the probe, an SNP era today described by the interim chief exec, Mike Russell, as the party's biggest crisis in 50 years. And then yet another twist in this saga. The Conservative leader in Scotland, Douglas Ross, now urging people to vote tactically, even if that means his own voters supporting Labour. Well, I think Douglas Ross is the political strategy what uh, Kuwait is to downhill skiing. I mean, it's really quite a bizarre thing to sort of have lack of purpose in the Conservative Party to advise people to vote uh, for another party. And I think the voters in England will hear uh, vote Labour and voters in Scotland will hear uh, that it's what the Tories want you to do, is to vote Labour. Labour have since called the comments from Ross arrogant, saying they are asking for voters for support, nothing else. Though they are keen to slash the SNP lead in polls and take advantage of the slight dip in support for the National Party. The Labour leader has visited Scotland four times in the past month. The polls have shown some drop in support uh, for the SNP more recently, but we can't necessarily tease out um, disappointment with uh, the, the outcome of the leadership contest and maybe even the appointment of the cabinet. But certainly it seems like support for independence remains strong. And since the SNP are the party of independence, they will be looking to recover that support. Um, and obviously that will depend very much on the outcome of the investigation that's ongoing just now. The SNP has been Scotland's dominant political party for a generation. The power couple once at the top of the party might be wondering for how much longer. Well, earlier I spoke to the Scottish Conservative leader, Douglas Ross, and I asked him first to explain his strategy, which could see Labour supporters voting for the Conservative Party and Conservative voters returning the favour to Labour. Uh, well, I'm very clear. I want Scottish Conservative voters to vote Scottish Conservative, but we know there are many seats across Scotland in the north, the northeast, the south, and the central belt, such as East Renfrewshire, where the Scottish Conservatives are the main challengers to the SNP. And if supporters of other parties unite behind the Scottish Conservatives, we can see the SNP losing seats right across Scotland. And that will send a very strong signal that we don't want to see more focus on another independence referendum. We want to see the focus on people's real priorities right now. Just to get this straight, it's going to be Rishi Sunak or Keir Starmer, the next Prime Minister, and you are asking Conservative supporters to vote for Keir Starmer, where Labour are in second place to the SNP. No, what I'm focused on is the seats where the Scottish Conservatives are the main challengers. It's up to other parties to decide what they want to do in the seats they are targeting. The, the comments you've made are where there is the strongest candidate to beat the SNP, you get behind that candidate. That's what you said. And what I'm seeing is right across Scotland, uh, in many areas, that's the Scottish Conservatives. Where it's the well, Labour candidate in second place, you would, you would encourage Tory supporters to vote Labour, would you? I'm making this point that currently both at Holyrood and at Westminster, the Scottish Conservatives have more MPs and MSPs than Labour and the Liberal Democrats combined. So we are the biggest party challenging at the SNP. And the electorate is sophisticated up here in Scotland. They want to see... Are you sure about that, Mr Ross? That... Because how many Sorry. seats are Labour in second place to the SNP in Westminster? Uh, well, less than the Scottish Conservatives. The Tories are in second place in 20 seats of the SNP's 48 from the last election. Labour in second place in 26 seats. 
If voters do as you wish and unseat the SNP, vote for the party in second place, and you somehow win across the board, you'd hand Labour a six-seat advantage over the Tories. Well, look, as I said to you, it's up to the Labour Party to decide how they're going to focus on the seats they're challenging in. What it's up to me to do is to maximise support for the Scottish Conservatives while also sending the strongest possible message to the SNP that we want to move away from their decade of division. Have you discussed this strategy with Rishi Sunak? I've not discussed this directly with the Prime Minister, but we have discussed where we're going to be focusing uh, our efforts in the forthcoming general election, because whatever that's called. The Tory HQ have said this is emphatically not the view of the Conservative Party. Well, the Conservative headquarters at a UK level and here in Scotland are determined and, and united in ensuring that we return as many Scottish Conservative MPs and MSPs at the next Holyrood election as possible. You're going to look pretty stupid, aren't you, Mr Ross, if you end up helping Keir Starmer getting to number 10? Well, as I say, we'll help Rishi Sunak stay in number 10 by maximising the number of Scottish Conservative MPs representing Scottish constituencies supporting a Conservative government at Westminster, as we've done uh, for many, many elections. Do you think that all you've succeeded in doing is giving the SNP a bit of a reprieve? Uh, no, I think people can see this is a tired, failing government and voters across Scotland are looking for the strongest way to send them a message. Well, the SNP have been having a lot of front pages recently. You succeeded in knocking them off at least one. Uh, well, I think they'll be looking at the other Sunday papers with pictures of police tents outside the former First Minister's house, with pictures of a camper van being removed by the police uh, and not be particularly happy with the coverage they've got this Sunday morning. Are you really in a position to be lecturing other parties about probity, given that the current Prime Minister and the former Prime Minister both received police fines for breaking Covid rules? I don't think either of them were arrested, interrogated for almost 12 hours, it released, released uh, without with charge. further investigations, released with further investigations ongoing and many, many items seized by the police. Uh, Douglas Ross, thank you very much for speaking to us.